compare four different accounts from the Holocaust through the lens of social support systems displayed throughout Seed of Sarah, Mouse One, Defiance, and The Pianist. I have divided the major events of these accounts into direct and indirect factors, specifically the ones that affect the people that survived in the accounts. These direct and indirect factors are some of the things that help to increase the odds of someone's survival at once while others do so marginally or only in the long term. First account I'm going to talk about is Seed of Sarah. In Isaacson's account, there are many different individuals within her social circle in the pre-war period, and especially the time before Hungary was invaded, that helped her through her time leading up to the Holocaust. These are her mother, her aunt, her grandmother, her grandfather, Dr. Bisco, teachers, her fellow students, and her boyfriend. Wartime support factors are as follows chronologically. Her mother and aunt nearby through her experiences in the Holocaust. This is both a direct and indirect experience. Isaacson's grandfather's advice, which helped her to understand Understand that men should not be feared, which is indirect. Magda's help. Next, with Magda's help, Isaacson and her family were afforded the opportunity to preserve their shared past. This indirectly affects their future as the photos that they recover helps them do this. Magda and her mother help Isaacson's grandmother, and this indirectly helped to model the help and community driven mindset that would later be used in the camps. Isaacson's uncle's advice about the Russian front directly and indirectly helped her as she used this advice to avoid sure death literally later on and potentially helped others do the same indirectly. Dr. Bisco's genuine care is an indirect cause as it helped Isaacson continue knowing that people cared for her despite her treatment. On page 55, Isaacson's grandmother also cooks for her and her family which helps them to keep up their morale indirectly and allows them to literally survive through the sustenance they prepare. Aggie's aside about her father's suicide also provides a glimpse of what social acceptance can allow as well as her family allowed her father to kill himself. And this social acceptance is what allows Isaacson to understand that the real importance that permission plays in an indirect way. Later on, gossip also plays an indirect role in providing entertainment when life gets most rough in Chapter 5. Dr. Garrow's advice to Jutka reinforced her uncle's earlier advice. The SS woman's information about age parameters going into the camp also allows Isaacson's mother to stay with her sister and daughter. This is an indirect and direct cause. Isaacson's mother and her aunt arriving shaved and hazing each other allowed them to lighten the mood and this is an indirect cause. Isaacson and Magda drag her mother through the camp into the shade. This is an indirect cause. Magda's simple encouragement to sleep is an indirect cause. When Juka and Alona meet again, their conversation is an indirect cause in that it allows the two to uplift each other. Later, Alona and Juka think better of suicide because their families depend on them. They think of their responsibilities. This is also a direct cause. The three girls near the latrines help Juka by allowing her to hear about her boyfriend, and they give her advice about how to eat her rations. Uh, these are indirect and direct causes. Juka also missed Bondi, and they shared common experiences from home, indirect cause. Juka's orders translated politely because she helps the capo and buys herself and other people time. Indirect cause. Isaacson's choice to not become a capo might have indirectly also saved her as a support group that she had might have turned against her otherwise. Jutka also manages to meet Eva who takes her to Sabbath prayers which indirectly uplifts her. Jutka soon after chooses to go straight. Even after she is shot at by the figure she calls Joseph Mengele, this is an indirect and direct cause. The woman in the the commandant's office later allowed her to take extra pills to her mother and even have a slice of lemon meringue pie. This is an indirect, indirect cause. The Frenchman Isaacson meets also keeps her alive as he compliments her when she's malnourished and tired. So this is an indirect cause. Isaacson's mother stole carrots for direct cause. Juka and Liz stole potatoes, indirect and direct. The stepfather guard gave extra food to Juka's mother, direct. Magda stole nine potatoes for the group, direct. Puki Duquez also allowed Juka to borrow a needle so she could amend her dress with a pocket, indirect. Mother and Magda dragged Juka, indirect cause. Juka's encounter with the French capo allows her and her aunt and her mother to hide in hospital beds. This directly and indirectly saves their lives from German execution. Later, there are many GIs that help them out. However, this is after the wartime events, and I'm not comparing that in this account. In the mouse accounts, Vladik, Anna, and Rishu, and Anna's family are all formed into a tight-knit support group before the war, as well as some of Vladik's associates in textile industry help to make another really strong social group that helps them in the war. Some of the wartime social support factors are first that Vladik received information from a rabbi and later from local Jews 
including Orbach, that allowed him to return to Sosnowiec, indirect and direct cause. A poll allowed Vladik to hide on the train back to Sosnowiec and evade capture either as a Jew or a prisoner of war in German custody, direct cause. Anna's father helped Vladik and Anna by donating to the Jewish community organization so they could get extra food, if only temporarily, in direct cause. Vladik's connections in the textile industry allowed him to trade in the black market with very little capital to begin with, which allowed an income and the possibility of saving money, indirect and direct. Olzecki helped Vladik again by hiding him from the Nazis' direct cause. Anna's father, Lolek, and Vladik worked at the wood shop, allowing for Vladik's work exemption and bought him and his family time, direct cause. Vladik was also able to trade on the black market with Sislarki's help, direct cause. Hiding Anna's parents was an indirect cause. Persis also helped to hide Rishu and Vladik for Anna, which is an indirect cause. They thought it was a direct cause and that it would really help their son survive, but I believe it was an indirect cause because, among other things, they thought that he was safe and were able to continue on knowing that. Hiding in Sridula was a direct cause, and the second bunker that Vladik helped make and hide in was also a direct cause. Paying Haskell and being moved to the shoe shop was a direct cause and indirect cause because he later used his shoe skills to re uh, repair shoes for guards as favors, and his life is saved when a Nazi recognized that he was protected by Haskell. After hiding in the shoe shop, Vladik and Anna escaped into Poland to find Mr. Lukowski and hide in the barn, which is a direct cause. Mrs. Montanoia helped Vladik and Anna stay in her house while Anna acted as a governess, direct cause. Kauka later allows the Spiegelmans to stay for a while in her barn, sheltering from them from the elements, direct cause. Miss Montanoia allowed Vladik and Anna to stay in her cellar and kick them out, direct cause. Vladik later helped a Pole who needed someone to write in German for him, and Vladik got extra food to share with Anna before they arrived at the camp, which is an indirect and direct cause. I'll now start on the accounts that involve movies. The first is Defiance, and it's about the Bielski brothers who hid themselves and eventually many other Jews in the Lipkanska forest from 1941 to 44, and their efforts saved the lives of over 1,200 people. This movie includes dramatic scenes that are amended for climatic effect at the expense of minor historical detail, and these moments include the brothers fighting, some conflict with the Russians, and the scale of fighting at the Germans at the end of the movie. The movie account only gives a glimpse at the family structure before the Bielski families divided, although the movie begins immediately with the mother, mother and father's bodies and the four brothers finding each other. The wartime social support factors are that the four brothers, Tuvia, Zuz, Azul, and Aaron, uh, from the beginner, from the beginning of the movie are the, each other's main source of support and throughout the experience lend much support to others. The Bielski brothers witness the aftermath of the mass killings, which is an indirect cause. Aaron brings survivors to the camp, which is an indirect cause. The local farm Farmer helps to hide local Jews and arms the Bielski brothers and tries to mislead the Belarusian police, which is a direct and indirect cause. Magadisu Jews provide information about the location and mission of nearby Russian army soldiers, which is a direct and indirect cause. Raiding local villages, killing collaborators, Germans, and scavenging their supplies adds to the immediate danger, but is a direct cause. Later, after a skirmish, they find Azul and the other survivors at a local farm, and they start gathering musicians, which is a direct cause for their survival. Taking milk at gunpoint from the Nazi collaborator slash farmer is also an indirect danger, as this man informed on the Bielskis to the Belarusian police. Taking in people from Noah Grodek allowed the group to figure out where the ghettos were, especially those in highest danger, and to get these people out. They even took the old and sick and injured from the ghetto, which is briefly mentioned in the movie. This is an indirect cause and direct cause as these people allowed Tuvia to learn about his wife's death and to help him carry on throughout the remainder of the war. Aaron's advance notice of incoming police and conspirators is a direct and indirect cause. The Belarusian police squads force the group to move further into the forest, which is an indirect cause, and cause them to regroup and solidify their organizational efforts in order to survive through the harsh winter conditions at the Nalibaka Forest Camp in December 1941. The the Russian party also helped the Bielskis to gain indirect military support at the cost of giving some of their most valuable fighters to the Russian war effort. Azol and Chaya's wedding is an indirect cause. The Nalibaka camp during the winter of 1941-42 experienced almost complete loss of their food stores, leading to the slaughter of a horse and German dog in the movie, and a cow according to Henrika Bielski's account of the events. Either way, these are indirect and direct causes. Later, attacking the German police station 
temptation to gain medicine is an indirect and direct cause, an attempted coup being ended by Tuvia is a direct cause in that it brought order and less food was needed. Ritual bathing practices throughout help to alleviate disease and also help to keep morale and spirits high when it was an indirect cause. Camp pregnancy was an indirect cause in that it also messed with internal order and increased the food strain and the rules of the camp were also being stretched to accommodate a child. The German army surrounded the forest and prompted the camp to have to flee across a large marshland and to fight back. Afterwards, the able bodies fought back as best as they could and were assisted by Russian soldiers. Those that survived might have benefited from a morale boost having defeated many German forces. These were direct and indirect causes. The next source is about a pianist in Warsaw. The movie's called The Pianist and it's about his family that's split up and he's the sole survivor of his immediate family group and the many trials and tribulations he goes through in order to survive. At the start, his friend helps him focus on his strengths rather than the bombs that are literally going off around him. That's an indirect cause. He hides money in his violin, which is an indirect cause. The man who helped him uh, get permits was an indirect cause. The manager eventually helps him and his brother eat and helps him to play the piano was an indirect cause. German officer picks Wodok and his sister out instead of everyone else. This is an indirect cause. Wodok's family is able to split a caramel for 20 slotzi, which is a direct cause. The Jewish ghetto policeman later saves Spielman's life by physically dragging him away from the trains, which is a direct cause. He's later not chosen to be shot in the work group, which is a direct cause. The resistance fighter Mayork's information about Treblinka and freedom helps him in an indirect and direct way, and he later helps the resistance, which is a direct cause for him being helped later. After he is beaten by a German officer, he's able to switch jobs temporarily, and, and he's helped by a foreman, which is a direct cause. A German officer chose not to shoot him when he lied to him, which is a direct cause. Mayork later tells him that he's ready to leave and helps him to escape, which is a direct cause. A woman and her husband shelter him and arrange for him to receive food as well, which is a direct cause. Another man allows him to stay for a day in a cupboard, which is a direct cause. Spielman then arrives at a flat where there's food, water, and shelter, which is a direct cause. Jewish resistance fighters fought the Germans, which is an indirect cause. Spielman later uses an address he was given by his earlier contact and meets a friend from the beginning of the war. Her husband hides him on the sofa, which is a direct cause. His contact in the resistance gives Wodek warning of a German attack, which is a direct cause. His friend's husband hides him in an abandoned apartment, a direct cause. His friend from Warsaw also helps him recover, which is a direct cause. Bielman receives four warnings of German efforts to destroy the building he's currently in, a direct cause. The room he is in is blown to smithereens and he manages to escape, a direct cause. Poses as a corpse before a German patrol, which allows him to escape later, which is a direct cause. He scavenges throughout urban Warsaw and finds food in order to live, which is a direct cause. He practices piano while he waits, which is a direct cause. He takes refuge in several structures and scavenges for food and water, uh, again a direct cause. A German officer discovers him and tells him to play the piano, which allows him to live, which is an indirect and direct cause. And a German officer delivers him food and gives him his coat, which is a direct cause. And the Russians fire at Spielman, after firing him, they realize that he's not a German and they help him out. That's the end of the direct comparisons, and now I'm going to segue into a counter-argument section, which is going to serve as a conclusion for detailing the differences, some of which are uh, geographical, familial, economic, um, and different areas all over the war um, that exist between the aforementioned accounts, and maybe see even some of the fictional adaptation differences that are present from the depiction to the real account. All people, especially in terms of Holocaust survivor accounts, behave differently and all the accounts I focus on shed some light on a particular strength that can be gained when groups help to alleviate some great stress and turmoil. These accounts by no means lessen the importance of the individual. Rather, these cases emphasize the importance that one individual can hold even in the worst of situations. Finally, regarding the indirect causes mentioned, many survivor accounts place emphasis on the ability of survivors to survive because they were helped by people directly. The less obvious factor is that there are ever-present motivations for survival. In this sense, I mean that these accounts all feature people that work very hard to survive, often not for their own sake, but to save others, usually family members or friends. The indirect factor in social support systems is often morale that rises after major events or narrowly escaping death. Vladek Spiegelman and Mouse tries and succeeds in the short term to save Jews that are hiding near several poles, who without enough vodka threaten to report these Jews. Vladek elects to buy more vodka, both to save the Jews 
used indirectly, but also to placate the Poles later. This action is resourceful and heroic, although his action is removed in saving these people directly. Vladik later goes to the Jews in hiding and advises them to move along as their location is well known throughout the neighborhood. My point is that the individuals influence their likelihood that people would survive both directly, in which case I've done my best to already mention previously. The indirect cases where people helped enough for people to survive are less clearly defined, but I have gathered several instances in which fit this description to demonstrate the impact that individuals have in allowing people to survive traumatic events like the Holocaust. Vladik's shrewd ability to try trade in the black market during his time in Sosnowiec and the camps is in part influenced by his goals as he has a family to provide for that allows him to continue in spite of his many obstacles. This family acted as a support system and that he was able to save food despite his malnutrition and starvation because survival was not an option, rather a self-imposed imperative. Versus's efforts to hide Rishu was an attempt to directly help Vladik and Anna. However, the failure of this could not have been predicted. Persis's Kindness and interceding may have helped to provide some measure of peace to Vladik's mind, which in part might have allowed Vladik to work harder and ensure his family's preservation. Otherwise, their family might have been together only to die together. Many cases in the Defiance account involve horrible circumstances wherein the Bielskis managed to allow for survival, for many through their efforts to work for the collective group. I believe social support systems are very important during these Holocaust accounts, and I believe that most of these people would not have gotten nearly as far as they did and especially the protagonists and central characters of these accounts would not have survived without the people that got them there. I think this happens in part because of direct causes, like providing food and that sort of thing, but also providing the unknowns like morale and basic human support. These are the sources that I used, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you. Thank you for watching to the end here. Um, I'm just going to talk about my channel for a little bit. Here on Fantastic Explanations, I make some pretty cool videos, mostly about history, philosophy, and literature, especially about how these three topics intersect. I try my best to focus on topics that are interesting and underappreciated, and most importantly, that are worth learning about. I try to present them in the best possible way so that they can be appreciated, and I think you could be the latest in a long line of people that have helped me to teach better for a larger audience. Joining this channel gives you front row access seats to learn and grow as this channel grows and expands and does more interesting stuff which I wager you won't want to miss. So the way to do this is to like this video and subscribe, at least to subscribe, and go ahead and watch a couple more videos or just research some of the things. What I try and do is add extra value in the description. That way you can read the sources that I'm talking about. At any rate, I really appreciate you watching and I really appreciate you learning. Keep learning, keep staying awesome. Thanks so much, have a great day.